these recordings are being done in context of a little project that me and my students are doing uh, we have named it project fox we don't have a very fancy name right now as we don't have a complete project yet so sorry about that so what exactly are we doing in this video um, I'm kind of doing a little coding session where I'll be creating a rather a base for the application that we are going to build and hopefully while doing so I'll also try to explain small concepts that one should keep in mind and the reasons why we are going through all this structuring and architecture of the project itself other than that um, these recordings are not supposed to be like an entire walkthrough of the project because i believe that like getting involved in the project itself would be the best way to do so uh, so in case if anyone is watching this video who is not part of the project i'm sorry if this does not give you enough inf information to replicate this project on your own end uh, that is in fact not the intention of this video at all so enough chit chat let's get started so the topic for today's uh, discussion rather is the application shell or just the app shell right so what is the app shell and why do we need it so just a bit of theory before i actually get started so application shell is usually like a container within which all your other pages are rendered uh, sorry for react specific terminology but these concepts are language agnostic so an application shell would usually have common elements that are seen across all pages that you have it will usually be the navigation bar uh, the application bar or the app bar and a navigation bar usually seen on this side right and in some cases you even have a footer right and everything else which sits here basically changes based on whatever url you have opened right so uh, maybe a nav bar maybe an app bar right and maybe a footer in some cases it won't be the case but you're getting the picture right so this will just alias uh, as content and keep it aside for now because whatever is left other than the content is what we are focusing on in today's video so the question is um, why do we need it first of all like what exactly is the point of doing so so the immediate answer would be obviously to keep keep a dry approach uh, dry stands for do not repeat yourself so the code which is common for all the pages would be written once hence can be abstracted in a construct called app shell right so to keep things dry obviously app shell approach is uh, a good way of doing doing things but the other benefits of this is that we can first of all have a better first paint or rather get a first meaningful paint or contentful paint and this usually happens both in client side rendered application and server side rendered application client side side rendered app right so the people who are a bit a uh, bit new to application development on the web there are majorly two approaches of doing things one is client side rendered app uh, applications and the other one is server side rendered applications there is uh, a third type of applications but they are more like a, a more of a static version of things so they are basically static side generation so that is not our um, like that will not be involved in this discussion because that's a totally different concept 
So in client side render app, rendered application, you basically have a blank HTML page, right? A blank page and once that HTML has fetched the JavaScript needed to hydrate that page or basically fetched the JavaScript which is supposed to execute, that JavaScript basically populates the entire application. So for a for a split second, let's say, even though the user wouldn't notice that because JavaScript fetching is parser blocking, but uh, for a while, like it's a blank screen, right? If the JavaScript is going to take uh, a good deal of time to to be fetched, it is possible that the user might not see anything on screen for a good good deal of time, basically. On the other hand, server side apps are rendered on the server first, like the page, the HTML content is generated on the server itself. Dynamically, every time a request is being triggered from the client side, and that page is being sent to the user, right? So in either case, the thing to notice is we can deliver the common bit of the application as soon as possible. And this will engage the user faster. What I mean by that is if we, if we are able to somehow uh, split this part of the code that basically renders the app shell, we can have like a small file, which is immediately fetched and the user sees, or is the user is basically presented with an app shell, no, no content whatsoever for a while, but the user sees something. So for him, the application has already started, right? He has a first contentful paint rather. So in client side, we can abstract it away and take advantage of code splitting to basically make sure that we deliver the smaller uh, chunk of code, which renders app shell first and later on basically make use of lazy loading for contents. React Suspense does that to fetch other contents needed to paint the rest of the application or the rest of the contents. In case of server side application, what we can do is if you already know that the part of the page, which is constant or does not change with uh, different versions or different, uh, different parts of pages, we can basically have this uh, app shell as a static content and whatever the content is could be dynamic content. So this can be a hybrid kind of application. So the user immediately, like as soon as the HTML is given to the user, the HTML already has this, right? As opposed to client side rendered application where the user starts with a blank HTML. In server side rendered application, the user is given the populated HTML content itself. So there is no waiting time whatsoever. So it's, it's faster at the same time, uh, server side rendered applications have other SEO oriented advantages, which, which we are not going to talk about right now. So all in all, the advantage that we see is that having the common part of the application abstracted away in a smaller section, uh, which can be optimized or rather taken advantage of using code splitting or server, server side rendered application or hybrid approaches is really good for user experience. So that is why app shell makes sense. Like having an app shell code, which, which, which has been abstracted away makes sense. So this is the why section of the video, right? Now we can probably get started with, um, the coding bits, right? Um, if you are interested in reading how application, uh, like when, when an application is fetched by the browser, how the entire render happens from HTML to the, uh, to basically pixels on your screen, uh, feel free to read the article I have attached in the description, right? So it kind of provides a comprehensive view of everything that's going on. All right, enough theory. Let's take a look at our code. All right, so there's a bug in Ubuntu, I guess. Huh, going down takes me to the bottom of the workspace. Anyway, so currently, uh, this is our repository. 
um, and we have as such we don't have anything going on so what I, what I've planned to do for um, styling uh, is that we wouldn't be using plain CSS or rather we would go with styled components because it's more convenient uh, because of the scoped styling basically of course this can be done using um, CSS modules but I prefer style components because this is what I've been using so far so sure so I'll go ahead and install style components like this right keep in mind that uh, whatever we'll be doing here uh, would try to emulate the path I'm expecting the students to take every time they implement a feature right um, so I'll just kind of mimic uh, the entire process of creating a pull request and I'll just merge it myself but yeah I encourage everyone to create a pull request from their forks right and this is because uh, it happens to be my repository so I'm not able to so I'm kind of unable to create forks so anyway like you'll you'll get the gist of things uh, when you fork things and and read about it a bit yeah so I think we have styled components installed we should be able to get started with something so let's dive into code we are using um, TypeScript so in case if I'm using very strange uh, types I'll just mention them so that you know you guys are aware of what I'm doing uh, yeah let's get rid of app.css uh, set up tests not planning to use them um, app test delete them logo delete and um, yeah why do we have a code component here not sure this is what the basic CRA boilerplate looks like uh, create react app uh, that's the npm module that I used to create the scaffolding um, sorry padding zero pixel right pixel okay just add HTML to the mix yeah and I'll just mark root as height of 100 VH so VH is basically absolute uh, metric for height measurement because this is basically 100% of viewport height so this basically takes up the entire screen and similarly width would be 100 VW which basically says viewport width so it will basically enclose the entire thing so why the root element is because if you go to index.html you'll see this particular div with the ID root this is where react mounts its application so indirectly this is our container for the for the entire application so i'll make sure that this has 100 vh and 100 vw so that i'm taking up the entire screen and not ending up with uh, unexpected scroll behaviors and those kind of stuff right so yeah with that i'll go here um index.css needs to be imported and this is the only place probably where I'll be using CSS because just to give the base styles so that should be more than enough um, yeah nothing funky going on here react strict mode sure uh, yeah cool and an app I'll just get rid of all these things just have a div here say hello just to check if things are rendering as they should um, start the application uh, what is it npm start <sighs> yeah just 
I'll just open it here and we have things running open the console for safe measure just in case if we are getting errors which we are not thank god right so uh, now i'll quickly test if um, style components are working as expected so const um just name name it something container is equal to styled which i haven't imported i'll import it in a sec uh, import styled from styled components what's wrong declaration file blah 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 okay hold on let me check if there's a typed like types requirement for style components uh, components type script so um, yeah so apparently uh anytime you install uh, uh anything in uh typescript not typescript if you are using any any library for typescript um you'll usually need something like this right so uh this is kind of true for pretty much every library if they don't have implicit type definitions so um Usually people will provide them for you. Uh, save. I just need to check if I have style component saved in here as well. Yeah, I do. Uh, whenever you are installing something using NPM, you'll have an option to install it and save in the dependencies uh, object listing rather key value pair i'll just call it object list sorry dependency list and uh, the other one that you have is development dependency which is different i currently don't have a development dependency so it's not showing up here but development dependencies are something that you don't read uh, sorry you don't need at runtime uh, so in general anything that you don't import directly uh usually falls under de development dependencies right so uh, but if you're confused about whether or not types should be in development dependency or normal dependencies just take a look uh react and all of those libraries are having the types and basically added to the de dependency uh, list so obviously your types for style components would also go here Moving on. Uh, so the style components are basically a way of writing CSS in JavaScript itself. Uh, it kind of returns uh, a React compatible component with, with whatever styles you provide. So style.div would basically mean that if you write or use this container anywhere, it will replace container with a div with whatever style you want to put it. Uh, put in it so it would be hmm, let's say border one pixel solid black uh, forgot to start the server npm start again here so we have a black border right so this is how it works so if if you know how to write styles in general in CSS, you should be fine using um, styled components. If you read about it a bit, you'll realize the um, advantages that it gives you. So it's a good thing that we're using it. All right. So back to our application. So uh, right. So we are going to implement uh, an app shell. Right. So an app shell would go in the list of components and we'll uh, just pay attention to the naming convention that I'm using. So in case of files, I'm naming them using uh, kebab case, right? So uh, kebab case because kebab has like a seek in the middle, seek kebab, 
kebab get it and index.ts for every um, top level component right the reason for having an index.ts is because you will be able to do something like this import app shell from components slash app shell and this basically means that this import will directly target the index.ts file and you wouldn't have to do something like this so it's a nice syntactic sugar for us keeps things clean right so what do we write in index.ts uh, i'll show that to you in a bit so we'll use the same name for the file as well for the top level file and this will be a tsx because we are going to use react in this code so whatever file does not have react in it we'll just use ts uh, for example utility files that just have functions but in case if you're using jsx anywhere right uh, those file file names ha need to have tsx or at least i like to follow that standard uh, in my custom written uh, uh, ESLint, I would usually make sure this is a mandatory rule. But sure, I mean, whatever CRA provides. From React, export default. Again, these are kind of constraints that you can put on yourself. So never do def uh, export from here, rather do it at the end of the file. So that in case you if you have higher order functions, you are able to do them swiftly in a neat way, right? So we'll just declare a function here. So as you know, I mean, I'm not going to go through the details of React. You can read that in, in uh, the React docs. They're going to do a pretty decent job as compared to a single video explaining React. So just read them, get a, get, uh, like, kind of get a hint of how React is working and how this code is structured. So when I'm uh, naming the functions that represent a component or a functional component, I would name them with Pascal case because, you know, React components need to have, uh, like their first character needs to be a capital letter. So following that, I'll use Pascal case. So app shell, function app shell right so what does app shell take any functional co uh, functional component would consume props and uh, uh, so you can destructure it right here which is preferable sometimes because you know what you are getting right and you'll have to mention the type of this props here um sorry about that also you have to mention the return type of this function here that's standard typescript for you so i'll just mention the types here type app shell props so this is a custom type that i'm defining and in this i'll say okay i'll consume children children uh, is again a react specific prop uh and just go read read about this like react children what does it do how do we use it should be very clear the type of this would be react react node which basically covers a sim single node text string uh, sorry string number uh uh basically uh an array of children if that is the case right so it covers everything so app shell props is the type of this i'll have to mention that this is going to be the destructured uh, variable the return type would be jsx dot element because returning a jsx element the return sorry dev app shell All right so now we export this default app shell simple sorry about the typo app shell says hello cool now let's check if things are working uh, we also need to check that the children props is working as well so i'll just add a span tag here and be done with it all right 
format it every time whenever possible because if things look good it will be easier for you to understand what you're doing so before i'm able to use it in app.ts or tsx i'll have to export it from index.ts because again we are referring to the index.ts file not app.shell.tsx so import app shell from app shell export default um app shell now again why do we need this kind of construct because sometimes you would want to have higher order components and you'd be i mean it would be easier for you to do these things in a separate file and have a separation of concerns so that you know where to look if something goes wrong uh, things are secluded and you are able to identify or rather isolate the sections of your code that are causing issues right so app shell has already been imported because i did so a few minutes back i'll try using it here app shell app shell hello i am a child of app shell all right let's see if this is working yeah so app shell says hello and this is the child so we are good so far all right so uh, let's go back to the designs that we had and see if we can replicate what we had planned so the design discussion ticket i think i was a big fan of one of those frost glass effects i think it was in here uh yeah so i i was planning on replicating this design for the app shell the contents in here and having a navigation bar and kind of a border like this so i had something in mind uh, that would resemble this but i also was looking for the frost glass effect so this right so other than that i have a bit of idea to kind of give this a nice backdrop so that it doesn't look bland right so let's see if we can do something about that huh okay so let's go to let's keep this simple for now uh, child cool forget styles for now and come back here right so uh, while using style components it's a good idea to have them separated out in a different file so that you know uh, where to look for style changes or style related issues so app shell styles dot ts right um yeah so export const app shell container right so styled dot div and let's start so uh obviously you would want your app shell to take up the entire viewport space so okay hmm. type completion doesn't work here does it hide 100 vh width 100 vh um i'll check if it's working or not by background color black uh quickly come here let's close the rest of the files to avoid confusion yeah so i'll have to import it app shell from app shell styles and something like this so I made a mistake here because it should be VW. Cool. So the entire screen is black, so I know it's working. Cool. All right. So first things first, um, we'll have to like when you're drawing something, right? Uh, what you usually do is you start with um, 
the element that's or rather you start with the background then you start painting the huts and the landscape and then you start painting the figures that are in in, in those uh pictures right the key pictures sorry key figures that are there in the picture so we'd have something similar in case of our front end application uh when it comes to ui oriented stuff that we are doing right so huh let's see um let's first of all wrap this part of the application in a separate wrapper why is that because in an app shell there are a few more things that that are uh, that that would be required right you would need a nav bar in our case the uh, in our design we just have a nav bar we don't have an app bar or a footer so we'll be done with that so let's do that first so i would name it app shell wrapper sorry for copy pasting because i don't feel like writing these variable names again and again but make sure you write proper variable names don't slack off because these variable names are going to save your day when you are uh, going through your code base and i mean if you don't have proper variable names you'll you'll have a very hard time finding uh, or figuring out what to do um yep so hold on mm, yeah <clears throat> cool so in this uh wrapper we'll have a padding of let's say four pixels right and uh, let's get rid of this black background right uh and how do we identify our element well we'll just mark it red and see if it is working as expected so app shell wrapper it's supposed to auto import but it's not working weird so the child will be here or the children would be here in a div tag right and the navigation would be here right so uh again i'll have to write their classes so now uh the approach i would like to take is unless and until we are embedding the actual component here i mean the component should have the autom autonomy of deciding how it should be styled the only thing the app shell should be providing is rather uh, a socket for them to attach to so try not to put styles in such a way that uh, the component underneath is unable to make changes according to itself right for example the nav bar uh can have an opaque background it can have a black background it can have anything and if you decide that right here in the app shell then it's it's poor design i would say so i'll just call the sockets uh stage so nav stage is equal to styled dot div um and uh, width of 64 pixels right so before we start using nav stage keep in mind that divs are stacked one below the other if you don't do something about that how do we fix that uh so we need to make sure that the app shell wrapper is of display flex because we are going to make use of the flex uh flex boxes to create our layout so display flex and by default flex has uh uh the flex direction is basically row 
so the divs would be stacked in a horizontal fashion instead of the normal vertical fashion right uh, now the content stage uh, should consume as much space as it can so content stage styled dot div would take a uh, flex equal to one which basically tells it to take as mu as much space as it can uh, and the other element is of width 64 so anything uh like after taking 64 pixels whatever's left will be taken up by content stage and that is something that we want right so nav stage and content content stage come on what's up um yeah so content stage has what it's uh, what it needs to have and navigation stage should hopefully take 64 pixels right save all damn it yeah yeah so after making the changes in our code we would see something like uh, something like this but again this is not what we wanted we uh, we ended up with a strip but we want the entire screen so what we'll do is we'll have a height of 100 percent for the app shell because it will take the height of the parent 100 percent height of the parent so this is what we get but uh we immediately notice a problem let me point that out but let's get rid of this red color right so you notice there's a scroll bar right so the thing is what's happening is uh, let's debug this quickly so if you check this out by adding the padding and 100% height what it is doing is it's taking 100% height of the parent but the padding is not included in that 100% so this padding of 4 pixels top and bottom thus 8 pixels in total is additional right so if you want to check this if i get rid of this padding the scroll bar goes away so what exactly do we do about this so there is one quick fix which is called uh, box sizing and there are two major um, options that usually we use which is content box which is what the browser follows by default in which the height and width does not include padding while on the other hand there is border box which basically includes the padding in your height so to keep things simple for us what we'll do is we'll go here uh, unfortunately for some reason i'm unable to make uh, box sizing uh, being inherited by every component so i'll have to apply a hacky approach to this and this should ideally fix the issue and yes we have got rid of the uh scroll bar and now we have things the way we wanted to right so uh um yeah but uh even though i think i have broken the order in which we should have implemented the things but sure i mean get the important things out first so again we uh, want to paint the stage for our content with a white background and this is because this is kind of a universal rule for our application for the navigation bar it might be different and we we are not sure uh what the navigation bar might look like but but the content the content stage should be white that that is a conscious decision we are taking so we'll go ahead and say background color hash 6f right so this makes it white 
we would also go ahead and apply shadow so not gonna be a hero here I'm just going to copy paste some shadows nice shadows that people have created shadow rules right so let's go with um, I think this looks decent uh, content stage let's see yeah we have something let's add uh, let's increase the padding a bit eight so it will be a bit more evident cool uh, we'll also add padding inside the content stage because that is something we want to have as a consistent thing going on for every uh, content that we render so yeah now we'd add a border radius to give it that card like feel um, how about six pixels uh, yeah I think it looks kind of decent okay we also don't want the navigation bar to stick to the um, stick to the container of our child so uh, we can either put a margin left on content stage or we can do something interesting which is uh, uh, um, use something like this margin right e pixels and I'm not sure if it worked no it did not I guess because margin right oh wait oh sorry 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 I accidentally went for margin right my bad yeah now it should work so uh, what this style tells is basically every uh, every child which has a sibling uh, just above it right in in case of dom structure it would be a child which has like uh, a, a child which has a sibling just above it so it would basically uh, target elements that have something like this like a structure that would follow something like this so uh, sure one div one div and another so if if i were to apply this style on the parent div here the divs that will be uh, targeted for this particular styling would be this because it has this and this div because it has another div just above it right i hope that makes it clear it's kind of a standard styling and if you go to tailwind docs uh, and search for space y i think they are using very similar kind of um, styles i think it's known as owl notation so something that you can have uh, in your notebook i don't know uh, kind of handy sometimes right so uh moving on so we have child uh let's mark the nav here for convenience slash nav yeah all right uh now we also want a backdrop like this right so let's start working towards that so now we would rather create a sub component for this um, to make sure that we don't have too much going on so content um, sorry components right. notice that we have like a nested components here but these components are basically subcomponents of AppShell. 
so uh, we'll name the one we are implementing as backdrop dot tsx again following the same uh, style of uh, file structuring styles dot ts hmm. so um, import react from react we won't export it like this so function back uh, backdrop uh, jsx element so this is what it returns obviously it will have props so let's declare that real quick um it may not have props actually it does not have props so no point in naming it so return div i am backdrop and let's see if it's working uh, from components slash backdrop and why do we need the backdrop again so the thing is let's get rid of this for a second right so oh i forgot to export this export default backdrop and this was here it's kind of stupid but let's go and we have an error why why is that oh, okay in typescript you cannot have isolated module so you'll have to write something here else it will keep giving you an error so i'll just do this and it should be happy come on sorry 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 about that don't open it here man yeah now it should be fine so why do we need the backdrop right so the thing to notice is that currently we just have a white background right and we want something like this right so firstly we need to uh i mean sure i mean we can just go get away with this color and and be done with it but if you were to have something like this see this orange tinge here so there's something underneath and the element on top which is which is basically our um app shell wrapper right so that particular element is kind of a blurry glass you know and through that you you basically have this kind of diffraction kind of thing going on so how do we do it right so let's get started with this first of all um we are basically implementing kind of another component under our app shell wrapper so we want our app shell wrapper on top of the backdrop right so obviously this sounds like uh, something which would involve position absolute right so app shell wrapper needs to have position absolute absolute right and if you read about this a bit position absolute will position the element from the most recent ancestor that has a non-static styling so non-static styling would be um relative absolute fixed sticky but anything which is like the the default value for position so we want it to be positioned from the app shell container itself right so we'll have to make this relative why not absolute because we don't need absolute styling for this we just need this for the sake of being there we, we don't mean to position this or something and why absolute here because we want to take this 
sorry we, we want to uh, make sure that the space that app shell wrapper was taking is taken up by backdrop and we are able to place app shell wrapper on top of it so we'll just go ahead and do a uh, top zero bottom zero left zero and right zero right so we'll come back to this uh, but before that let's start implementing our backdrop right so in backdrop um, export const back sorry backdrop container styled div uh, style div position um yeah so in this case uh what what i'm thinking of let me show you real quick maybe i can just draw it here yeah so what i'm planning to have is uh we already have our um app shell kind of ready anyway right so think of this uh, uh uh, what, what I'm planning to do is basically I'll have a div which is kind of circular have another div here and have another div here and mix it up a bit and then apply blur filter on uh, on the app shell wrapper so this will basically create that like blurry backdrop on which our contents rest Right, I hope I'm making sense. If not, just just follow along, and I hope it will make sense eventually. Yeah. So, uh, yes, backdrop container. So, in order to position the balls that I just mentioned, uh, we'll have to make use of absolute. I mean, I'm not planning on making use of margin, negative margin, and all those kind of stuff to. Uh, kind of position divs on top of each other so i'll just go ahead with position relative for backdrop container and for the for the balls i'll just uh yeah styled div position absolute right and border radius 50 percent because 50 percent border radius will basically uh make your divs circular provided they have um like a square shape so for making things square let's have some sort of default dimension and we'll improvise from here so height uh 120 pixels and width 120 pixels let's start with this right um cool so backdrop back drop container it's not importing man what's wrong with it from backdrop styles and ball so we'll have three balls um, three balls okay and let's style them differently as far as their color is concerned so background color um Let's go back to up. Uh, let's make use of a palette. Uh, mm, 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 mm. This color looks fine, so this will be one of them. Hash. Uh, okay. Style. Style. Uh, this will be the second one and 
this will be the third one okay uh let's see what we get uh, i think all of these balls are placed on top of each other so i'll just move them around a bit so top zero for one ball uh and uh, left zero yeah, i'll improvise this in a bit just hang on top zero left zero make this right zero and make this bottom shit sorry bottom zero let's see one ball is missing why is that so we'll just quickly inspect them yeah so if i go here and t take a look at the height at zero pixel right so bottom when you use the bottom property it relies on the height and if the height is zero it's not going to work so what do we do we'll need to make sure that the backdrop container has a valid height not zero pixels so height of 100% and there you go why height height 100% works here is you need to make sure that the parent has a valid height before you use percentages because percentage won't work if the parent does not have a valid height so if you land in a situation where the parent does not have valid height and you still have to make use of that uh, number just make use of vh and vw should be fine uh yeah again so now let's go ahead and make the balls a bit bigger um height uh let's go with 70 vw so 70 percent of view width uh no 70 percent of view width would be a problem because width is significantly larger than height here and we do not want the balls to go out of you know uh to be so so big that they just go around like outside the screen so let's not do that 70 vh and we need to make sure that it's the same for both so now it should be significantly bigger great now uh let's try to um get them a bit of an organic uh, position because this looks very artificial so let's try something like um, top zero would be something like 20 uh, percent right so uh if you have noticed and people new to react uh, we have a we have an object here instead of a string like th uh, like that you have in html so that is just the way react has been defined so you have to follow it also notice the use of camel case instead of the usual uh, kebab case that you have in css that is again because while declaring styles in components um, you have to make use of camel case um so top 20 percent um, let's see how that looks it's a bit too much uh top 10 percent yeah top 10 percent looks fine uh the next one the purple ball so this is the purple ball so bottom zero left maybe 10 percent oh shit sorry it should be string sorry i said sorry so and the ball in the middle let's keep it left but give it like uh, uh, i don't know 15 percent hmm it looks okay just bump this up a bit looks a bit too weird 
Yeah, better, I think. Now let's uh, apply blend. Um, don't remember the style, so I'll just go Google CSS blend. CSS blend. Just make use of this. So what this will do is basically tell CSS how to uh, blend the colors together, but it's not working. Why is that? Um, hmm, interesting. Hmm. Oh, sorry, it's not background blend, it's mix blend mode multiply. Now it should basically have this effect where it's transparent and it, it mixes with, with whatever's underneath. Right. So uh, let's go ahead and apply the blur filter for um, for the for the app shell wrapper. Yep, let's go. So um, again, let's Google it quickly. Uh, background blur CSS backdrop blur filter. So this is what we are going to use. Backdrop blur filter. We'll go with about. 25 pixels let's see if it works it did not work and let me quickly verify if this is a bug that I'm going to deal with mm. app shell wrapper oh we don't have the app shell. Sorry, we commented it out, right? So we'll get it back there. Yeah. So. Okay. We have something going on. Uh, what we'll do is in order to see what's down there, we'll just comment these and see. All right. Now let's get back the blend in there and you'll quickly notice that the blur does not work anymore this is a known bug in css so in order to make this work what you need to do is apply opacity of anything but one so we'll just go with 0.9 and now it works again so also we would like to dial down the colors underneath because we want it to be subtle and not so provoking so we'll go with something like this and after that we'll just go back here and bring our contents back uh, hmm Interestingly, the color of our backdrop and the content stage are very similar. Uh, we do not want that. So what we can do is um, we can go to uh, material UI colors and pick something nice that would suit the backdrop. Um, but for background color, we'll have to make use of the alpha value. So uh, let's do this RGBA picker. I'll tell you why that's the case. For example, let's say we want something glassy, right? So we can have like a really um like this kind of color now 
if we put it here right and we start fiddling with the alpha yeah now what i can do is i can go and make use of this in my um app shell wrapper so background color and this and now we get a relatively glass like backdrop hopefully and the stage is well separated and it's clear that like it's a different screen on top of this and thus we have our app shell completed i think uh so a few questions that you might have is um why do i have the spacings like these um there's no specific reason i just space them out based on the semantic uh kind of based on what they are targeting so for example these are both related to background so i've grouped them together this is padding this is separate uh height and display were like top level styling changes that we did these are positioning related so i just space them out this way for for my own sake but it's not a mandatory thing that you have to do the more separated they are the easier it will be for you to figure things out um amidst the code so it's up to you how you want to do it but again our work is not done here um so what i want to do is i want to make sure i create a pr right so I cannot push this in master, first of all. So I have to create a new branch, right? So I think uh, as long as I have unstaged changes, uh, I'll, I won't be able to switch branches. So I'll have to add first, get add, get check out dash B will create a new branch. I'll uh, use the naming convention of feature for FEAT for feature slash app shell and it has created a new branch for me i'll just check the files that i'm about to commit is all there i'll write the commit name uh, and for each commit the way you should be doing it is go here um go to the issue tr uh, issue number that you are trying to solve tag this right go back here come on and write it like this so the hash number of the issue that you're solving and a short message uh, telling what you have done so implemented basic app shell cool so now i should have this here and i'll git push origin feature app shell so this will create a new branch on the repo called feet sorry feet slash app shell and if you go here it will even tell me that i've created a new branch which is behind master do i want to create a pull request yes i do so i'll just click compare and pull request it's all there if you want to add additional details regarding what you have done Go ahead and I have to select a reviewer right so in case um, it, it could be your peers it could be me if you're contributing to this right and yeah just create a pull request after that uh, I'll just go through the changes that you have done hopefully one by one right and uh, okay see uh, here there's a missing new line right i'll show you a few things so in backdrop also there's a missing new line i think these are the two files that don't have new line so app shell styles and backdrop style so i'll go back here i mean for for example let's say it was i who 
mark these out for you i'll just write here hey new line missing please add them so as soon as i create a comment here it should be a cue for you that i should not have i shouldn't have to go and mark all of these like a single comment should be enough for you to recheck your code for new lines everywhere but let's say like okay i just have one comment and i'll start looking for new lines for rest of the code to make sure that i don't have them uh, anywhere else that i haven't mentioned so styles run the formatter it will do everything for you backdrop styles again no new line run the formatter done now what you'll do is you are going to update your pull request so git add dot git commit um this can be any random message to be honest like i'll just write a temp message but don't push this yet what you want to do is git rebase dash i origin master and this will help you rebase it and we'll just squash the message uh, and that's done so git log one line yeah so back to one message and just force push this uh, back to feature app shell to update the pull request as you will see the changes will be reflected there hold on and now the new line changes have been added so basically now i would just go ahead approve it i mean <laughs> it's my pull request so i cannot approve it but if this will be your pull request i'll be able to approve it and further i'll be able to merge it but in this case i'll just go ahead and merge my pr anyway because squash and merge confirm and done so here in master i think we have our app shell ready so that's it for our today's session next time we'll start looking into um, client side routing uh, which is again like a super simple concept but very crucial in um, structuring your application because that again helps in like if you're looking for doing lazy loading of components those are some some of the tricks um, that you can look into to help you understand uh, how the application should be structured so that you can leverage uh, the modern techniques available to you to improve your application uh thanks for watching uh if you have doubts regarding these videos and if you are not one of my students just feel free to drop a comment there i'll try to answer them and if you are my student just note the doubts that you have let's have a, a faq session and you guys have access to the code just take a look at the code and if you have any doubts feel free to ask me take care bye bye